Like our common interests in life, theme parks evolved to cater to the ever-evolving interests of the millions of visitors that walk through their gates. However, ultimately some things have to come to an end to make way for progress and Poseidon's Fury, located at Islands of Adventure, was no different. This high-tech, for the time, effects show was the park's hidden gem that featured some truly awe-inspiring special effects that ultimately contributed to its demise. On this episode of How It Worked, we'll take a look at the incredible practical effects and engineering that brought the story to life for millions. Formerly located at Universal's Islands of Adventure, this walkthrough show was one of the centerpieces of the Lost Continent, a unique land not based on an IP or brand. Originally paired with the Eighth Voyage of Sinbad stage show and the Enchanted Oak Tavern, Poseidon's Fury and Mythos were the last two remaining pieces of the land. During the conception of the attraction, Universal Creative became infatuated with a truly amazing practical effect they would then form the story they wanted to tell around. The Lost Continent section of the park was often hailed for its immense attention to detail based solely on the imagination of Universal's creative teams. Intricate rock work and detail is woven into the land and the facade with many small touches that often went unnoticed. Entering the queue for the attraction, guests made their way up to the facade and inside the archaeological site traveling through tunnels and corridors until they reached the merge point. After being herded into the first room, the live actor host of the show would climb down from the walls, meeting guests and making the attraction more personal. With a bit of audience participation, they would get the plot rolling, compounding in a battle later in the show. After summoning the gods, a secret temple opened from behind guests and they were ushered into the next room. Inside, a small room of treasures awaited, along with Poseidon's trident. At the center of the chamber stood a large circular cartouche door, helmed by the guardian of the temple. Now we're standing on the platform that the audience will be standing on in what we call the Oracle Chamber. In front of us, there's a great stone cartouche, a huge set of interconnecting rings. After noticing that guests are trapped inside the temple, the host takes Poseidon's trident to try and break a way out, waking the guardian. Represented by rear projection, this character, aided by full color laser effects, grants us a wish of a safe passage home. Comprised of a large turntable mounted on a guide rail, the door was split into five smaller rings along with the ability to roll the entire unit. set of interconnecting rings. The wheels of the cartouche move, creating little patterns as they go. And all of a sudden, we hear the wheels of the tumbler lock into position and a great burst of steam is released from behind and the cartouche stone begins to roll out of the way. With aid from six smaller geared down motors, the large cartouche door would begin to rotate as sections of its interlaced rings would spin and lock into place. With a spray of steam from the sides, the door would seemingly roll to the right and the walls would pull away revealing the main feature of the attraction. Named the Vortex by Universal Creative and the host, this unique practical effect was the true hidden gem of the park and the show. Developed in partnership with Technifex, an entertainment effects company, the Vortex began testing in late 1996, years before the park would even open. Starting with just a small 10-foot section of the tunnel, the mock-up was tested in Paris with members of Universal's creative team in attendance. This test was necessary to tweak the water's flow rate and subsequent speed to even see if the effect was feasible, and more importantly, safe. And the water forms all the way around the inside of this tube. In order to create such a unique effect, a smooth 40-foot tunnel was formed over a bridge that guests would walk over. 
To the left of the tunnel in another room was a massive reservoir called a surge tank where water would pull prior to the effect. Above were multiple high flow rate pumps that would draw water up from the surge tank and push it up all towards the tunnel. Forced out of a manifold uh, with 40 nozzles in it. Now we're standing near the vortex manifold to where the pipes from each of the vortex pumps comes in. These nozzles up here are the nozzles that exhaust the water at a high speed and forces it around the inside of the tube. When the water does come out of the nozzles, it does come out at very high speed, um, between 90 and 100 miles an hour. And that's the speed that it takes to get the water to go all the way up and around the inside wall of the tube without falling away. For example, think of those large carnival roundup rides where riders are pinned by centripetal force as the ride turns on its side. Riders in this case are like water and the ring is the tunnel. At some speed, riders would fall away, so a specific threshold has to be maintained. After granting us passage, the door opened and the pumps ramped up sending a wave of water over the bridge before accelerating to the necessary speed. In awe, guests are then directed through the vortex and on into the actual show. In the original version of the show, guests entered the Temple of Poseidon. Through four water screens and over 100 controllable effects like fire and water cannons, the CG battle would play out in front of guests with participation from the host. Soon after opening, the show would actually close for rewriting to make the plot more involved and more relatable and also to allow for better effect control where some effects were toned down. The battle scenes would also be reshot with live actors, which was met with somewhat mixed reviews. Overall, the plot of Returning the Trident remained, but was slightly altered, which did kind of make the story a little bit rough and at times a bit cringy. The ending of the original show sent guests back to the temple from earlier, with help from some ollie shaped ceiling features, a replica of the second chamber room was hidden in the rafters above and quickly lowered at the end of the show. In fact, you can see some of the hall cables and real ceiling briefly during the transition. Occasionally, the replica chamber also doesn't move fast enough such that the swap is actually visible for a few seconds if you pay attention and look up. In the second version of the show, guests began in the replica chamber and were transported to the Temple of Poseidon on request to return the trident. After the battle between Poseidon and Lord Darkanon concluded, Poseidon would send us back to the chamber, which meant the replica was lowered back down from the ceiling. Back in the chamber, guests were then ushered out to the right, and through a tunnel they would exit back into the park. Unfortunately, Poseidon's Fury passed its initial allure when the park opened, never became the success Universal hoped for. Many guests complained that in a park of rides, they believed Poseidon's Fury, with the vortex and effects, had simply a very elaborate pre-show, leaving guests with a, wait, that, that's it, where's the ride, kind of feeling. With the rapid success of Harry Potter, the first Wizarding World was announced, which claimed the Enchanted Oak Tavern along with many of the area's charm. Later in 2018, the neighboring stage show, The Eighth Void to Sinbad, closed and has been sitting abandoned ever since. Over the years, the building continued to have issues, with leaks and effects mainly stemming from the vortex and the sheer amount of water it moved. Frequent visitors began to notice deterioration, disrepair, and some puddles in the queue nearby where the vortex effect sat. 
Despite an extensive refurbishment and a repaint of the attraction's facade, Poseidon's Fury reopened in March of 2022, giving hope that the attraction's future would be secured. However, this was rather short-lived. In April of 2023, Universal announced the closure of Poseidon's Fury for the following month. The sudden clamor of instant fans gathered for its last month of operation, with the show reaching capacity on its last day of the last tour at 9pm as the park closed for the night. While Poseidon's Fury was truly unique, with guest demands changing, we know that there will never be anything like it ever again. As for the future, only time will tell, but a certain permit queen, <coughs> you know who you are, I think uh, points to a possible Legend of Zelda land and attraction, which expands on Universal's partnership with Nintendo. And that's how it worked. If you enjoyed this deep dive, please subscribe, ring the bell, and share this video to help us engineer curiosity. Comment below your memories of Poseidon's Fury and more. Thanks for watching, stay curious, and we'll see you in the parks. Oh, by the way, if you would like to print out a small version of the cartouche door that I made for this video, I will put the model files in the description.